Hello, everyone. Welcome to the show. I'm excited to be joined again by my friend and business partner, Mr. Michael Benson. We do these sustainability shows every week with topics of interest, insights, things going on in the market. And he and I also work together on fuel reduction, emissions reduction, and plastic Man. waste reduction with monetary gains. So it's really fun doing this kind of work. It's great doing this kind of work. And, you know, you always say that I have these great intros. And today we're talking about like scope one, scope two, scope three emissions, et cetera. And I was trying to think of something that would be interesting about emissions, but then I decided you probably can't. You'd have to, you know, blank it out. So. Oh, yeah. Well, I was going to admit, admit some exhaust, but <laughs> I don't think anybody <laughs> wants to see that. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that would have been a great intro. Yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah. So we're, you know, we're talking about today Unilever. Yeah. Perhaps some of our audience has heard of this company before. I, I don't know. Maybe. I mean, it's like, have you ever heard of the Home Depot? <laughs> <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. So you sent me this research article. Unilever yeah. sets new goals to cut value chain emissions by 2030. And it's all about their action plan, their new climate transition action plan, CTAP, outlining the company's strategy to become a lower emissions business and achieve its climate goals and introducing new value chain emissions targets, accounting to a 39% absolute reduction in total targeted scope three emissions by 2030. So I wanted to ask you, you know, what are the differences between scope one, scope two, and scope three emissions? Yeah. So, I, you know, I used to think that like, you know, like your scope three were somebody else's scope one and so on. And, you know, or your scope one were somebody else's scope three, I guess is what it was. And I guess it go, goes both ways. And it does for the most part. So like scope one are emissions that your company directly is responsible for in your day-to-day -day operations. You control 100%, right? So right, we're talking about manufacturing facilities, trucking fleets, those sorts of things. Exactly. So so an asset-based trucking fleet, their truck emissions are their scope one. Right. Right? Right. Now, their scope two is where is the emissions of their energy sources, right? right. So their scope two, it would then be, Okay, if they're if they're running their their facilities on electricity and it's a coal fire burning plant, right? That that's, or if they're they're using diesel, the emissions from the the uh, the diesel plant <laughs> or the uh, the refinery, the refinery. I should say. In other words, the refinery for all you lay people, they would <laughs> <laughs> they they uh, it, that's their scope too, right? Right. And now scope three for our office or our, our, our audience, I mean, you're wearing a trucking tower thing. This is an original uh, Sonar logo, by the way. Oh, that's Sonar right there? That's the original logo. Okay, got it. Right? Yep. And there's reasons why it's not around anymore, but that's the original Sonar logo. Um, it, uh, is um, your supply chain is, is your scope three. The entire yeah. thing is your scope three. All the trucks that move your goods and do it, all the, the emissions from the DCs you might use that are outside your direct control, your third party logistics people, your uh, the, the emissions of all, every single one of your vendors up and downstream, right? Yep. <laughs> so it's yep. not just the materials you're extracting from the ground and how they're processed and coming in and being made into the parts and mood, but then it's the other end distributed distribution to your customers and all that other kind of thing. So if you're selling through target targets, emissions are also your score scope three. Right. Right. right exactly. And you know, I have these conversations with fleet executives and more and more, in fact, pretty much every time now in their yeah. RFPs for retailers like target, like Wayfair. Yeah. Amazon, whatever it might be, they're asking them about the impacts they're making on greenhouse gas emissions, but not just that they're a green company, green or whatever. Give us numbers. What have you done? Yeah. Because they're yeah. outsourcing their business and that's their scope three emissions. So they want to know what those companies are doing to impact emissions. Downstream. Yeah, scope three, is, scope three is a real thing. And I thought this was really a, a good... Um, you know, use case to just to show people 
is serious stuff. When if you're a three PL, right? It's arguable to me whether the carriers are your scope one or scope three. Right? <laughs> I think they're really, I think they're really your scope one. If you ask me, if I, if I were going to argue this in a court of law, I'd be on the side of they're your scope one, brother. <laughs> Sorry, because <laughs> it is your that capacity is you, your commodity that you're selling. Right. And, and, and so I, I would argue that it is actually your scope one. And, and that doesn't I don't think puts any you know, undue pressure on anybody. But you got to realize that Univar is serious here. And when somebody like a Univar does Unilever. something, it, Unilever or Unilever, sorry. Yeah, yeah Unilever. Unilever. Unilever is very serious about this. And when they do this type of thing, it, it, it is it. Others are going to follow. I mean, Unilever is not a follower. They're a, a leader uh, in this. And others are already doing this is the reason why they're doing it. But I mean, this is a behemoth, a global behemoth that, and you, you, you mentioned some numbers there. And if you look at those numbers in that article, they wanted to hit something by 2030, right? 30, a dead 39%, but they want to be a hundred percent. I think it's a hundred percent scope three done, you know, over, you know, reduction by 2030. I think, is that right? A hundred percent. They want to do 39% absolute reduction in scope three by 2030, but they want to also, in addition to that, included achieving a 100% reduction in scope one and scope two emissions by 2030. Okay, that's what it is. And now here's the thing. If you read further in that, those goals were put together in 2020, right? They reached 70% of the goal last year. Right. They're already 70% of the way there on that 39% reduction. So they're dead serious about this. If you think this is, oh, we're going to escape by. No, you're not. You have to figure out a way to reduce your, your emissions. And if you're providing them with capacity or any type of, of services in their supply chain, okay, they're going to cut out 100% of your emissions eventually. Right. Yeah, it says to date, it, quoting the article, to date, the company said that it has reduced operational emissions by 74% from a 2015 baseline. Okay, and there the you emissions go. intensity of products by 21% compared to 2010. Yeah, so they're, they're 70% of the way there, basically. So they are at it. They are, they are doing it, working on that every month. Yeah, these are, these are not like, these are, these are not, these are not wishful statements, right? We, we all, everybody talks about having a dream and stuff like that. And a dream is just a wish unless you're working towards it, right? These, right. these guys are dreaming about this. <laughs> They're actually doing it. And, it, and it. and it's very, very important. You've got to look at certain ways to do this, whether it costs you money or not, because it will cost you business, which does cost you money. So even if you're looking at a solution that costs more money, you've got a way that risk, right? I mean, you've got to invest money in order to retain business and or grow in this specific instance, right? This is not, oh, I'll buy this and maybe I'll grow. No, you, you have to spend the money and the energy to be sustainable. Otherwise, you're going to go out of business. Right, right. Absolutely. It's not going away. We may change it from CSR to ESG to sustainability or whatever it is because nobody likes them and they think it's unfashionable. And if they call it something else, it'll go away. It's not going away. It's getting stronger might just be called something else. Right. Yeah. We see it. We hear it. We feel it um, with the executives that are dealing with it and working on cleaner, greener uh, solutions. And the good news, like on the cyber fuels front, we yeah. help companies reduce the fuel they're consuming and reduce emissions at combustion as well. And it's a net savings. It's a net savings. So you don't have to spend more money to do it, you actually get money back from doing it. So I love that that work is so much fun because they can take that money instead of putting it into fuel and diesel exhaust filters, D DPFs and modules and all the things, they can put that into revamping their warehouse with solar panels or uh, putting it into marketing or putting it into any number of other things that they can use it instead of on fuel and emissions equipment, basically. Yeah. I mean, well, you know, there's reduce, reuse, recycle, and, and you know, it, it, and they, they make perfect sense. It, in this specific case, it's, 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 you're reducing, you're reducing the amount of diesel that you have to use, right? 
Yep. And you're reducing the negative impacts of it, both on the engine and through the emissions at, at the exact same time. And like you said, that net cost, the difference there is um, it's, it's operating at like a 75 OR, right? <laughs> Isn't yeah, it? It's, uh... We're, to, put we're it in P&L, to put it in P&L terms, right? Right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and we, we have measured anywhere from 10 to 23% net cost reduction on fuel spend after the cost of the equipment and the chemical treatment. So we're talking right. about 10 to 23% net cost reduction on your fuel spend. That's yeah, right. Impactful. So you you should expect somewhere in the high teens or something like that. Anywhere in there that average between thirteen and twenty three or whatever it is. is so you look a high teens uh, OR. Which when I was at Roadway Express, if you if you got an OR below ninety six, we were popping champagne corks. <laughs> <laughs> right. I I've worked for companies where the ROI was like a year and a half to two. Oh yeah, sure. <laughs> this ROI happens in like months. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you yeah, break literally. even and then you're all profit from there. So it's very impactful very quickly as well, which I love. Um, you even yeah. have a system of dispensing it to where it doesn't need, they don't even have to think. That's right. Automated dispensing. Yeah. Drivers, Drivers don't have to think. Have to Nobody think has to it. think about it at all. Yep. Nope. Absolutely. All kinds of scenarios of automated fuel dosing. And, uh, We've got a lot of exciting things happening on that front. Some fleets rolling out, big fleets rolling out, and yeah. different things happening there. So super exciting times on that front. And we're a part of this mission to reduce emissions, but do it economically as well and save some money at the same time. Yeah, absolutely. And if if anybody out there is still confused on whether there's somebody scope three or not, <clears throat> the nationalgrid.com, the picture to for the example of scope three is actually a truck with a forklift loading a pallet on it. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's, so it's pretty clear. <laughs> if you need a visual, <laughs> there it is. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> oh, man. Well, it's always fun doing these shows on trends topics. Uh, I see more and more momentum happening out there in the market every week, every month. And it's fun uh, covering these topics, Michael. Oh yeah, absolutely. I love it. I love evangelizing, and I love uh, I love just I like I like doing what we're doing, and I like the fact that we're helping the industry that you and I both grew up on, right? And 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 that's really what it is because the struggle is is real out there to find that sustainability in supply chains, but the solutions are also very real, and some of them actually are, are very very beneficial. I still contend the search for sustainability. It, 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 it is the same thing as becoming as efficient as you possibly can. You're reducing as much cost and as much waste and making your operation as efficient as possible. Sustainability naturally follows. They go together as proving your bottom line, improving your bottom line and your top line and sustainability efforts. They go together. They're not, they're not opposites. Right. Absolutely. Spoken like a true evangelist. <laughs> um, no but it is a lot of fun and we love being able to make these kinds of impacts for companies and for the environment at the same time so it's a lot of fun that's going to do it for this show for this week everyone i hope you have a great rest of your week and uh, we'll see you on the next one take care peace and love everybody <laughs>